Take a look at our top story on the final day of the 19th edition of the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore. Tension over Taiwan continued to dominate. As a war of words between China and the U.S. over Taiwan's autonomy continues to occupy center stage. In the latest, the Chinese Defense Minister Wei Fengke has reiterated Beijing's call of seizing Taiwan by force. During his address at the summit, he said that no one should underestimate China's military capabilities and that Beijing will not hesitate to fight for Taiwan till the very end. He also warned that those who are pursuing Taiwanese independence in an attempt to split China will come to no good end. Well, this is to remind the viewers that Taiwan is a self-governing island nation. However, China has time and again claimed Taiwan to be part of its own territory and has threatened to seize it, even if it involves using force. As strife continues to deepen between Washington and Beijing over Taiwan and the security situation in the Indo-Pacific, Another top Chinese diplomat has now accused the U.S. of creating divisions and fanning confrontation between countries in the Asia-Pacific region. The deputy chief of Joint Staff Department in China's military commission, Zhang Zhenzong, has told reporters on Saturday that Washington's Indo-Pacific strategy is designed to trap the Asia-Pacific region into a geopolitical game. Zhenzong's comments can be seen as a direct response to the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's speech at the summit on Saturday. Austin blasted China for its provocative and destabilizing military activity near Taiwan and openly criticized Xi Jinping's regime for being coercive and aggressive. The issue of Taiwan is just one of the many differences that both the countries have had for years now. U.S. and China have clashed over everything from the South China Sea to human rights violation in Hong Kong and in China Xinjiang. Washington and Beijing have also been at loggerheads over the ongoing Ukraine war, with the U.S. accusing China of providing strategical support to Russia. For more on this, we are being joined by Keone Everington, who is a senior editor at Taiwan News. Welcome and thanks for being on the broadcast. Let's start by talking about the war of words between China and the U.S. We know the Chinese defense minister has reiterated Beijing's call of seizing Taiwan by force. What is your assessment of these comments? Uh well, first of all, I think this reflects the fact that this meeting hasn't been held um, in quite a while since the pandemic started. So it reflects the increased tensions that have occurred uh, during that gap. And uh, it's also uh, a reaction by the Chinese to what Biden has been saying. It, he has, at, at least on three occasions over the past nine months, indicated that the U.S. would uh, militarily intervene if China used force to try to uh, invade Taiwan. Uh, so I think part of it is to um, try to put the U.S. back in its place and try to push it back into more of a, uh, a big, it's, its original approach of strategic ambiguity. And um, so China's pushing back on what Biden had been saying before. Now, uh, in response to what China said, uh, Taiwan's Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson, she said uh, she described their threat of using force as absurd. That was her uh, reaction, and she pointed out the fact that, uh, in fact, um, Taiwan has never been a part of the People's Republic of China, and and that's something that uh, China, Beijing, has been trying to keep pushing this narrative that somehow Taiwan was part of 
of the People's Republic of China, but it, it in fact never has. So she reiterated that, and she thanked Austin for uh, expressing continued support for Taiwan. Right. Now we have uh, witnessed the ongoing tensions between the United States and China over a host of issues. When it comes to the regional order, how do you see the situation unfolding? Uh, in the future, well, um, of course, a big piece everyone is looking at is what is happening in Ukraine. And uh, there's different schools of thought. Uh, at one point, the fear was China will be instantly emboldened because they will take advantage of the fact that uh, you know, the U.S. is distracted. And um, if Russia had a quick victory, which it did not, obviously, uh, China would have been emboldened. The second phase of the school of what people have been thinking was, oh, well, it's become very difficult for the Russians, so the Chinese must be getting taking pause now. And now we've reached another stage where there's a fear, again, that China is going to be emboldened again because uh, the Biden administration is very much uh, engaged in what is going on in Ukraine and uh, might still try to make a move. However, right now, uh, Taiwanese, the Taiwanese Ministry of, of Defense they estimate that China probably won't be able to really invade Taiwan until uh, 2027. That seems to be the date that, that they're looking at, 2027. But before that point, um, yes, obviously tensions are rising. Uh, when Duckworth came to visit Senator Duckworth, uh, the PLA sent 39 warplanes to the uh, Taiwan's ADIZ. Uh, so that ratcheted up tensions. Uh, I think it's we're going to see continued a ratcheting up of tensions uh, because because of what Biden had said, and I think the Biden administration is going to stick to that policy of of being a little more clear about that the U.S. would intervene militarily. That's going to make China agitated and want to uh, try to push the U.S. back on that policy or try to call its bluff and raise. You know, more tensions with more more flights in the ADIZ, uh, more naval uh, missions around the area, and uh, so I think, yeah, I think it's going to continue to ratchet up. Um, uh, but we don't know exactly when China might want to try to make its real move. Um, but we're we're becoming increasingly worried here uh, because they might see that what's happening with uh, Russia is there were a lot of sanctions. But it didn't stop Russia yeah. at all from continuing to do what it's doing. And so we're, we're, there's concern that that might be the same case with China, that it might just continue right. despite any sanctions and can full force with its plans and maybe even speed up its plans. Right. Absolutely, Keone. Now, what sort of a practical impact, considering what you've just said, is this likely to have when it comes to security in the region? Well, practical, uh, basically, um, well, okay. I, I, something that comes to mind is the fact that uh, China, Taiwan is going to need to continue to build up its defenses uh, as a deterrent. This is the most important thing to try to prevent uh, Chinese military action. Uh, but the challenge is going to be because, because of the war in Ukraine, uh, the U.S. is getting stretched thin in terms of uh, the supplies that it was originally going to send to Taiwan, such as uh, Stinger missiles. Um, mm -hmm. F-16s, a lot of important weapon systems. Also, the U.S. is getting stretched thin in terms of its attention span with, you know, it's focusing so much on, on uh, Ukraine. So it needs to continue to uh, have missions in this region to continue to send a strong signal to uh, China that, no, we're still paying attention to this as well. And that's what Austin right. is doing, as we can see from his statements. He's trying to reiterate we're here, we're watching you, uh, we want stability. We don't want uh, right. war, but we're, we're willing to back up Taiwan if we have to. Right. Keone, thank you very much for your valuable insights and joining us for all the latest. Thank you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.